But let's get straight to our top story. The government today stepped up its drive against the internet, ordering more than 250 websites to be blocked for uploading morphed images and videos that caused the rumor mongering here in India. With nearly 40% of these sites based in Pakistan, says the government, Delhi has asked Islamabad to cooperate and help shut them down. A statement just released by the Department of Electronics and IT says that they had called for a meeting of representatives of social networking sites based in India and advised them to take whatever action they could to disable this content immediately. But that such inflammatory and harmful content continues to appear on these social networking sites despite the advisory and request. The statement says the initial response from the international social networking sites indicates that such content has been hosted from outside the country and to a large extent from a neighboring country and that an intermediary site has responded that the uploaders of the inflammatory content are outside the jurisdiction of the country implying that they are not obliged to take any constructive step to deal with it. 125 websites blocked by the Ministry of Home Affairs in the past few days as many more remain to be blocked in the wake of the Northeast unrest, all guilty of hosting inflammatory content. The government finally cracking down on misuse of technology, but is it enough? Anyone who is uh, literate enough to use Google, just type in the required uh, theme that you look for, looking forward to and it works. So how does a government block inflammatory content? The answer experts say is to go after the creator and not just the content. It, it's, it's extremely sim simplified and it's extremely uh, easy to get access to, to most of the websites. All you need to know is figure a way out to reach it and it's all done. There are loopholes too. Since many users use proxy servers to remain anonymous, so the solution lies in being able to take strong action against offenders so it can act as a deterrent. There are many problems very inherent to India which might not, not necessarily be the same yardstick in many other uh, Western countries. So far war has been fought on land, sea and in the air. Now there's a fourth dimension, the cyberspace. Cyber warfare could be considered the most sophisticated form of guerrilla warfare. The enemy is deadly and anonymous and on target are entire nations. India needs to be prepared because the war has now gone virtual. With camera person Kamal Kant in New Delhi, Avleen Gill, NDTV. So is India terribly underprepared when it comes to cyber warfare? Joining us for that on the program tonight, we have Ajit Tobul, the former director of the Intelligence Bureau. Here with us, the senior associate editor of The Hindu, Praveen Swami, someone who writes extensively on security issues. From the BJP, Siddharth Nath Singh, Mr. Kumar Ketkar, senior editor, joins us from Mumbai. And joining us shortly from Islamabad, Lieutenant General Talat Masood, the former defense secretary of Pakistan, to bring us some perspective on how they are looking at this in entire issue. Mr. Tobul, uh, how do you look at this, this entire issue of cyber warfare? Do you think our agencies at the end of the day have been caught napping? Because, you know, these, these uh, morphed pictures and videos have been on the in internet for several weeks now. And, you know, we clearly didn't know about it until you saw this exodus of people from these cities. Well, I think you have put many questions. How I look at it is, number one, that cyberspace is extremely vulnerable and probably no country in the world today is in a position to completely control and have the access control of any offensive or anti-national cyber messages coming from one place to another. That is the general part of the problem. Secondly, we are aware that cyber war has been an important aspect of Pakistan's offensive covert warfare against India, whether it was during the Khalistan movement in the 80s or in Kashmir, and there had been images, there had been messages, there had been footages which has been created. It was completely misleading and it was done. And thirdly, we are aware that in the Northeast, the ISI had an agenda and as late as 2001, when Skari Salim was arrested, 350 persons from Assam had already been sent to trained in positions as sleeper cells with the objective of destabilizing that. Now, as I look at it, it is like this. What is the larger agenda? Is it something only to take an advantage of a state of uh, some disruption in India or is it a higher agenda that is they would like to create a positions of communal strife and ill will within the country. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app fully optimized for retina display full screen view faster response time and Sudoku 
Handy TV's new iPad app. Download now.